We're the Wandering Food Dudes, and I'm Fish. I'm Poetic, and today we are in Puerto Vallarta. We're getting ready to do some food tours sponsored by Vajada Food Tours. We actually have here Luis Alba, who's going to be showing us around here, all the different places, the different foods here. Today we are at El Puerto de Oro, and we're going to be having some tacos, I believe. That is correct. We're going to be having a carnita style taco, even okay. though they advertise it as it's not carnitas. It is a new recreation of carnitas that focus on a certain part of the pork, which is an amazing and caramelized pork belly, oh, the blue pork tortilla, and the fresh salsas that is key and one of the most important elements in Mexican food. And this is the Versailles neighborhood? That is correct. This is the Versailles neighborhood. Versailles neighborhood um, has trended up, I would say, in the past five years, and it's really becoming this gastronomic neighborhood. Would you oh. say like daytime or nighttime, or you have to hit up full, it both day and night to get the full effect? Of As a matter of fact, we have two tours. We have a day tour, because you could get so many things during the day. Yeah. But also we have a separate night tour because there's a whole different element of restaurants open or so I'm available. Assuming some at night. stuff might be like open, like maybe because they open later, it's better to have that night tour and then exactly. also show the nightlife of what's Exactly. Around so here. there's restaurants, for okay. example, that are only open in the morning, like Puerco de Oro. And uh, and you know, and there's restaurants that are only open at night, which is more for dinner, more for okay. maybe some drinking. So Versailles definitely has that diversity of the two worlds during the day and during the night. Okay. So good. And so based off that you have to come along, use them as your food, food type food guide tour, uh, and we'll be showing you some of the places that they take us. But again, nighttime, daytime, they'll have tours for both. Come check it out. It'll be in our social links to now, below. Let's go ahead and let's go in and try some of the wonderful pork. Let's see what we got here. This is what we're gonna have today. A pork belly taco, which is this new recreation of carnitas. Doña Ana and his son have built this beautiful restaurant a little bit over a year ago called Puerco de Oro. You have Doña Ana back there making Hola. the blue corn tortilla, which is from a maíz criollo. Maíz criollo means a native corn that oh, usually wonderful. comes from the south of Mexico, which is a blue corn. As a matter of fact, curious fact, is that corn comes in this color, or purple or blue, yeah. Yeah. as natural. Yellow is the very unusual. Exactly, it's, yeah. it's more of the transgenic corn. <laughs> Check this out. From a specific cut, which is a pork belly, lo puedes así. Look at this, you have the element of crunchiness, or chicharrón, and then you have the element of meat and grease. This is gonna get chopped up. Oh, it's so good. Into carnita style or shredded. And then one of the main things about this taco is this beautiful display of salsas. Look at look at these colors. Colors are very important for us. Okay. The chili oil sauce. Okay. okay. This right here is probably the most important one. It's super flavor. It's not really that spicy. People think it's super spicy, but actually the flavor that it that it provides, it's amazing. Okay. You have this kind of like sesame oil. You have a habanero. Ooh, wow. You have guacamole or a creamy guacamole. Then you have a base tomato. This is for the people that want more on the softer side. Okay. Then you have your spicy one, which is habanero. Okay. The tomatillo, that it is a must in a religion. Know, that's, that's my wife. I love Right here, I sauce. love, I'm, I'm a green person. Same okay. here. Same so here. I will do either two greens and one red. That's just kind of how my mind works. Then you have the pickled onions or red onions with a touch of uh, oregano and and, uh, and vinegar. And the lime juice? And no, uh, yeah, lime juice and a little bit of vinegar. So oh. they kind of pickled it so it has this beautiful flavor. My favorite okay. thing to put to the taco or to add is a piece of jalapeno. I know a lot of people are against this, but you have to understand that these jalapenos for us are like candies. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and then you have the palate cleansers that are right here. You have the, the radish the and the cucumbers. So these say are that's something you definitely would use as a palate Yes, cleanser. the palate cleanser. I usually put them on the side. Okay. I like to put them on the side of my dish. So every time I put the taco, I get a little bit of the jalapeno, a little bit of the radish, and you have all these flavors wrapping up in your mouth. I have never seen this one before. What was it called again? This is a habanero. So this is basically just roasted habaneros. Oh, okay. And and I just made into ma okay, made into perfect. made into a sauce. I like the fact that they made it into a sauce because usually we see how you it. I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's spicy. Actually, you I'm see, gigante, I don't know if you can notice, but this is the smallest one of them all. Yeah. And the reason is because you don't need much of this because it's already That's spicy good on morning. its own. I was just <laughs> no, and it looks beautiful. People probably get confused. You're like, oh, this is a mango sauce, or I see. I, I like habanero, but. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm like, I'm very careful. That looks like it's gonna be potent. Yeah, no, it's it's, okay. it's definitely it's definitely gonna be potent. Oh so the idea, guys, I always tell everybody when we do the, our chores is that the number for salsas is two to three. Me, three would be ideal. That means that you choose from the display of three salsas, the flavor that's gonna provide it's amazing, a dash of lime. The palate cleansers, and for those just wanting a little bit extra experience, you're gonna throw the jalapeno. I know there's heat to that. Oh yeah, for sure. As well as like it's definitely it's gonna it's gonna get your tongue. That's, oh yeah, that's right it here. It does add that flavor to it though. It really does. <laughs> no 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 no. <laughs> just that flavor of that vinegary jalapeno yeah. is gonna add so much to your taco. So that would be my recommendation. Doniana, look at her. She's. She's already preparing our tortillas. They're gonna chop up the meat and we're gonna get to I eat I love here. the fact that they're actually making them fresh. Every single tortilla is made one by one. Have, have you ever had a blue one? I have not had blue tortillas oh, before. So, so this is good. gonna be an extra special treat for oh. me. This, well, this well, is, let's, so let's, now we're gonna try some yeah, food we're dig yeah. They already have the little stack of tortillas ready for us. Pork belly is ready. The salsas are right here. And, and guys, we're gonna dig it. Yeah, I'm ready, let's do let's this. Go. So, go ahead and explain exactly what, what So, like I said, the taco is all about preparation. It's key. You have the, the blue corn tortilla, which is the base. You have the protein, which is in this case the pork belly. And then you have the vegetables. Usually it's going to be cilantro, onions, and cabbage. Okay. That's always going to be, or in different regions, it's going to be a thing. Which is funny because you said it's, it's not really a cheese thing. Because when he was asking, yeah. he's like, oh, it's cabbage. Yeah. Yeah. Really che che cheese, cheese is an American thing on tacos. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> we're yeah, here that's in Mexico, so we need to do it the proper way here. A lot of, uh, a lot of clients are like, hey, Luis, uh, where's the cheese? And yeah. I tell them, well, actually, in Mexico, we, it's not what you we don't do cheese in tacos. We See, that's, good, that's, good to know. that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, that's correct. We, use we, we separate. We separate yeah. the things, <laughs> and then you have the display of salsas. Like you see, you have the salsa verde or the guacamole. You have the green tomatillo sauce, and then you have I like. This is my personal decision. You have that little chili oil yeah. sauce, and then I love to cleanse my palate. Then you have the key element, which is lime. Lime is the must in a religion. You're gonna squeeze a tiny <laughs> bit right there, just like this. Let's do a little lime on here. Do a little bit of lime, and. I don't know if you, uh, if anybody has told you this, but tacos, you can eat it literally however you want, yeah. but I like to savor it. I like to at least have three bites. Oh, you know? uh, I agree. Uh, I, I, should, yeah, I, I don't think a taco should be a one bite thing. I don't think I it like that's or wrong. two. I think it should be at least three, three bites. Yeah, no, I agree on that. Well, <laughs> and it's interesting that they use uh, the pork belly in particular, because I didn't get introduced into pork belly until I went to South Korea. Mm -hmm. They just don't really have it very commonly in America, so like, it's really exciting to see that here. We're gonna test that, and then just the pickled onion. I'm just gonna have some by itself. I was like, what did you put on yours for a sauce? Ooh, damn, yeah. that's good. Um, oh. So I did the pickled onion. I did some crema. Just by itself. And some of the, the green. Yeah, that pickled onion by itself is good. It, it has a nice tart uh, sweetness to it that you just don't get with Americanized pickles. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And like. I, I spent time in Japan and South Korea where like the pickle markets were so huge mm -hmm. and to have flavors like this, you know, as you're walking down the street, it's just amazing. And adding the salt on that actually adding, really it so, brings it out. I know I know this is a uh, Mexicans probably have a high oh, yeah. and blood, pressure. blood pressure. <laughs> but adding that salt and that lime, just that is probably one of the most important things. I mean I would, I would be so aware that you see a Mexican that goes to the tacos and doesn't ask doesn't, for doesn't salt, the salt and lime. Gotcha. It doesn't matter. It's already salted. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this yeah. is gonna be key element. Well, so let's try the salt. Though. Let's pick this. this. Give it a nice little look see for all of you, and then no break. Mm. Yeah. That has such a intensity of flavors and level of uh, different liquids you see how the, in different time timing you see how the salsas just wrap oh, it around right. just wrap it around you have the pickled onion you have all these key imagine if we can get the shit back home <laughs> that'd, be good. that'd be awesome right that'd be awesome <laughs> and i'm assuming it's the green sauce that i have here it's just a decent level of spiciness for you know white white boy like me <laughs> but um but it's not overpowering. Like it, it lingers on the, the palate without being harsh. No, it's just it's it's very friendly, right? Yeah. You do have that key of spiciness, but as you can see, it's way on the back, and it's like a gentle, nice yeah. spice. Well, I got the habanero on mine. Oh, okay. So, so you have a little bit more. So intensity. I got a. 
a heat in my mouth that's just like a fire. <laughs> It's hot as can be, but it's delicious though. And the thing is, I can still taste all the ingredients with it. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that even with the heat, I can taste the pickled onions. And then the, the crunchiness though, that's what I'm talking about. That yeah, crunchy, right, that when crunchy you bite into it, bro. So you have the meat element, but then plus you have the crunchy yeah. element, but then you have the tart, the, yeah. the pickled onions. The salt, the saltiness to it. The, the tortillas are just holding up so much better than the um, than the, the tortillas back home do. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah, these are thick, these are homemade. Usually, <clears throat> it just tastes fresher than oh, yeah. normal. Oh yeah, for sure. For and the sure. fact that you can taste all the ingredients separately, but together at the same time, with the freshness of it, just makes this like, yeah, I, I could definitely see myself eating a lot of these tacos. Okay, like, they're dangerous. Like, bro, these, this, oh my god, the crunch on it. The curious fact is that I live uh, two blocks down the street, on the same street as yeah. and god damn it, that is. It must be, yeah. It must be a real temptation. I, I'm thinking this, to this move. is. <laughs> this, bro, I need this to is. move closer to a gym, then I decide to move closer to the taco, so I don't know if that's very smart or, <laughs> or not smart on my part. And most people would say this is, a good, this is a good thing. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is move closer. <laughs> my, my, my fiance for sure loves it. Mm. Well, they're good tacos though. No. I love the spice to it. Like, the habanero is definitely a fire. Debbie has some heat, but it's still, it has a lot of flavor to it. I don't know what they mix it with or what they blend it, but it actually has like good flavor yeah, to the habanero. Yeah. It's not just like this like, heat that just kills you. So how, how much would a, a taco like this typically run for? Mm. This taco uh, right now costs 22 pesos. 22 pesos, so a little over a dollar. A little bit over a dollar, yeah. A that's little a, bit over a dollar, steal. but I mean. It, it, it's a steal. You know what's sad though, it's like, this is like a little over a dollar and it has incredible flavor. Like five stars out of five, yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. I mean, back then I go back home, home like, I'm paying 350 paying and it's like, dollars eh, a taco it's, it's so, so, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. this, this is 10 times, yeah. This and is, I, I really love that the pickle bun. Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, I tell a lot of people that um, in Mexico, sometimes, or m m many of the times, it's cheaper to eat outside than actually or to go out. Obviously, we're talking about the taco world, not restaurants, but right. to go out to these type of places or, you know, even though they're amazing, you go to the tacos, it's cheaper to go probably every day to the tacos than buying But I mean, food. can you really get sick of tacos though? Can you? Get the what, sorry? I don't think you really get sick of tacos. Dude, I mean, I, I, I've been eating tacos for 34 years now. Yeah, so you can't really get sick of tacos. I mean, they're there's, good. There's no way ever yeah. I could get And I every different get place you go, there's always going to be different kinds and exactly. different meats and different sauces. Oh, yeah, so it's we not have, always the same. I was, uh, I think we were talking about this earlier. Uh, in Mexico, there we have so many variations of tacos that we decided to, uh, let's say, put times of the day for it. For example, we have the breakfast taco that is yeah. carnitas and birria. Just for an example, here in Vallarta, we have daytime tacos that usually wrap around seafood. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so and again, time of the day, have to hit both the day <laughs> and the nighttime yeah. uh, That That's exciting. You said, so daytime tacos are usually the seafood? The seafood here, and then nighttime tacos, it would go in the category of cabeza. Uh, pastor, Space. yeah, cabeza is uh, the the head or the head of the cow. Anciently, it was supposed to be a cheap part of the cow. Yeah, I was gonna say usually because cheap, nobody right? wanted it. Now it's like now almost everyone realized that it, it's that, funny that, that, that I, I, everything is so a lot of people like Anthony Bourdain. He's like, oh, like this is the most prized part. It's like I've been in since I was a kid. Uh, you know, growing in Puerto Rico, but like the cheap people are like, oh, you gotta go for the cheap. It's like I've had it before, but like if people make it right, mm -hmm. it just it's, well, it's, it's, it just it's, comes apart. It's, and these people yeah. have been doing these type of tacos um, all their life, right? Actually. I, in our tours, I always say that, you know, these type of stands are generational. Yeah. It's not, like, these permits were given by the government uh, in the 60s, in the early 1930s, for example. They were given to the people as a way of incentivizing the economy and bringing them to yeah. bring it in taxes. And then all these stands were provided for the government. So the people, owners of the stands, nowadays there's no more. So okay. that means that the stands went up in market value. Oh wow! So no more, no. There's no more permits out. You can't go. Oh, go to the government and say, "Hey, can I get a permit for a taco stand?" There's no more. Okay, the ones that exist are already owned by somebody, and you have to buy it from them. But there's, it's such a good business that usually they do it generational. It's they just the keep passing father it down. or the grandfather that started it, the dad starts it, the son, and probably the grandkids, and so on and so, so on. So that's kind of like the taxis in in New York in City. New York City. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Okay, okay. That, that's good to know. That's awesome. So like most of these families have been cooking tacos, for, you know. Yeah, generationally. 
father you got, to son so basically mother you got, to... you got grandma's recipe and grandma passes it to everyone. Yeah. And if it's grandma's, you know grandma's. I mean, yeah, cook, you, know. Mm. you can't go wrong with grandma. You can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't go wrong with grandma. And like I said, simplicity, simplicity is a key. Mexican food is about its simplicity. It's about its fresh ingredients. It's about everything made, making it at the yeah. moment. You have two or three key elements, which is the corn tortilla. You have the protein. I like the cabbage in it, though. The cabbage is just, it's, cabbage. Such, it's, it's refreshing. It, it soaks up the flavor. Honestly, it I actually like this better than cheese now. Like, I, I now I kind of feel like if I go somewhere, they offer cheese, like, now I'm good. No, give me I cabbage. You have cabbage, yeah. It's, just, it's and, and refreshing that, and crunch, too. It gives that whole sensation of healthiness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, I, I can have three tacos because I have cabbage now. Yeah, There's no like, cheese, oh, so you're not going to have more. I used, to, I used to have two with cheese. Now I have four tacos because it has yeah. cabbage. That's how I see it. That's my logistic. And that, that's your veggie for the day. Well, that's, it, that's it's a lot better than, than the lettuce, which wastes all that water. <laughs> yes, exactly. So what do we have here? We have the chicharron and salsa verde taco. This is one of their three items on the food menu. They have the pork belly taco that we tried. They have the chicharron and salsa verde that basically it's uh, cooked in green sauce yeah. with garlic elements and more and spices. That's this one? And that's this one. And then they have a black bean and panela taco, which is the black beans traditional to here. Okay. And also the panela, which is a homemade type of cheese, very similar to what a burrata would be. Okay, Actually, okay, okay. it tastes almost very, very, very similar, similar to, that? to a burrata. Now, do you know if it's like, so you said it was garlic in it, and so is it like whole garlic or no, it's pretty it's, much like? No, it's pretty much just flavored or seasoned. seasoned Actually, the key of garlic, you know, it would be very, very light on the back. The okay. element of this is obviously the citrus of yeah. the green salsa. The, you're gonna have those crunchy or let's say kind of crunchy still flavors yeah. of the chicharron or the pork skin, but also you're gonna have some of that meat as well. Okay. Together with the taco, creates this beautiful flavored and flavor. spiced. Huh. Spice, and when I mean about spice, I don't mean about spicy. Right, the, the flavors. Yeah. Just the yeah. flavor yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. 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 Okay. So it adds a whole different profile to the flavor. And like every single taco, guys, you have to prepare it with all the stuff. So let's, let's add some let's, stuff let's on there. Let's grab some and uh, flavor them up. Add some. I feel like I'm going to add a little bit. And then I think I'm going to do some of the green sauce. I just got to add some green sauce. It's just too fire. I cannot not do it. Uh, pickled onions, bro? Oh, look at that. They're so good. I can't like not try to do the pickled onions. Yeah, how do you like the pickled onions? Oh, the pickled onions are, good, are absolutely right? fantastic. Now I'll do a little lime. And we're good Some on that. that crema. And then we're going to uh, do something I usually don't do, guys, and uh, try some adventures here. <laughs> Actually, that's not really that spicy, so you are gonna be okay. Oh, okay. It's actually very. Now, if you want to adventurous, you can well, take a dad I, I've with a become habanero. almost infamous for my uh, intolerance. Uh, so, habanero. how about the uh, a dad with a habanero? You know, just a little. Yeah, well, you know, well, 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 one thing at a time. Boy. How about like, because that's not spicy at all. When, so maybe just have? like you know, a drop, just a drop. Yeah, I already, I already put, put to my 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 limit to three salsas. Oh, Let's get some of the uh, <laughs> palate cleanser there. Okay. And of course, like you said, some salt on it. Some little bit of salty. And some lime. And some lime. Now we're gonna make sure we do this the proper way, the way they do it, because this is, you know. But this just looks so good. Uh, 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 chili here. Go for it, guys, go for it. Okay. Wow. Ah. Actually, you're completely right. Like, I only put a very small amount because I was worried about it. But like, that I get the flavor without a whole lot of heat. And again, oh, wow. like, it's not that I don't eat hot stuff. It's just I generally don't add it to it. It's just whatever the, the way that they, the chef normally cooks it. And so. It, it kind of goes against my, my normal nature to, to add <laughs> sauces to, to recipes. Yeah. Well, actually, a lot of people are afraid of the salsas, you know, uh, and the tours are always encourage people, like, guys, try it, put it on. Don't worry about it. It's, you know, yeah. it's, it's that's that's what's going to feed the if you If you really want to experience the culture, you got to try If they have sauces, try the try sauces. Try them. A lot of them, or I would say more than half of them, believe it or not, are not spicy. They're designed for flavor profile yeah. we we love our salsas this is and, so good and it's just you know it's just flavor has this mild yeah. it just adds it ups the flavor it flavor ups more. the flavor yeah. it's not uh, it's not to burn your face off or to burn your mouth off it's more to add to the this is super profile. soft it's just like it literally just 
melts. Melts in your mouth, kind of like, like almost buttery. Yeah, of. it's like, I was expecting more like, Firmness to it, but it just literally just melts in no, your you mouth. Have, that's because they rehydrate the, the skin. They rehydrate the skin, uh, and so that skin that. gives it that buttery taste because it melts literally, it melts in your mouth. Yeah, I mean, as, as here's some of the drippings, but like that all just falls that's apart just as you're flavor. grabbing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the fingers is key, guys. You do it with the spoon, it doesn't taste the same. You have to do it, it really, it really doesn't. <laughs> Definitely have to do it with the fingers because that's where all the flavor, the flavors are. Mm. That's crazy. Like, I like, I like the crunchiness of the other one, but I love the flavor of this one. But the flavor is just, it's ecstatic. But like you got, it's, oh, it's just so good. And that, that's kind of a hard, kind of a hard choice for me between the two, which one I like better. Just because I, I do love the more depth of flavor mm -hmm. that the uh, the garlic and and the. The, what was the, the other sauce part of it you said? The tomatillo, the green tomato the sauce. The green tomato sauce adds to to the pork. But like, as you said, the, the crunchiness of it is also... And you can't go wrong with it. Take that home. Yeah, it's like, if you want... So I, I always say that you combine your tacos, you get two of the carnitas, two of the... Yeah. Of the chicharron salsa verde, and then you have all these beautiful flavors with all the salsas and all right. that. You have probably one of the best, best meals in Mexico, or at least here in Puerto Vallarta, because yeah. this is where they are. And you'll be happy for the rest of the day. You go off, if you're in a budget, this is also works, but it's a high-end, I call it the ultimate budget taco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would definitely travel a half hour, 45 minutes just to eat this. Like, oh, honestly, I, I would definitely travel for it. I mean, it's it's simple. It's a, simplicity always brings the best flavor. Honestly, yeah, you, sometimes if you go overboard, it doesn't really help anything. Exactly. But there's times where you just want to have something simple but delicious. So, so you were talking about a lot of these places are generational tacos, as you were saying. It. Mm -hmm. um, like back home, there's a lot of like um, cooking academies and chef training and all that stuff. Do you guys generally find that restaurants over here are trained more of in-house, or is it more of like? you go to that school way over there to go learn to be a cook? I, I would say there's a there's a nice balance because there's a lot of trained young Mexican chefs. Yeah. That I would say more in the new years or in the new generation, this is happening more on the younger chefs that are going out to be trained. Yeah. But Mexico's cooking, Mexico's background, Mexico's flavor profiles comes from generations, comes from the grandmas, the mamas that get passed yeah. on through generations and generations. I mean, it's just, it's that's where it is. Mexico can be spiced up or can be trend up, let's say in the gastronomic world. Yeah. And actually chefs uh, like Juan Lornelas, for example, that is the co-owner of this place right here, or international chefs like Enrico Rivera, and you know, that just really bring up Mexican food to a different level. Yeah. But the soul of Mexican food, always gonna be to the grandma. And I bet you that these chefs, even though they're trained, and if they want to learn how to cook yeah. like this, they're gonna go back to the grandma. Oh, definitely. They're gonna oh, yeah. go back to those recipes. Well, that's good, because the, the thing is, like, grandmas have that traditional flavor from, you know, mm -hmm. their grandmas, and from, it's generational, like you said. So, like my grandma, nobody, everyone says it, but in fact, my grandma, nobody can beat my grandmother when it comes to Puerto Rican food. Absolutely. But it's one of those, like, that's, everyone has that grandma that can cook really, really well, yeah. and it just continues passing it down, and then it just, small things that get tweaked as the generation goes more and more, but like, I can see where you know why there's so many is just because why not yeah i mean por que no that's what yeah. we say in mexico <laughs> por que no why, why not but yeah no it's 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 amazing uh, you know mexico has really trend up not just in its food and its culture and its economy you know us proud mexicans a new generation are really pushing out there you know yeah. really pushing the other part of we haven't seen in our culture, which is chanting up our traditions and yeah. really putting it out there in the map so people can see that we're yeah. we're, we're really proud of what we are doing yeah. nowadays. If, would you say, so Puerto Rock Variety has been a, a cruise destination for a long time, but I, I, I was being told that, hey, look, yeah, we get we get the, the outsiders coming in to, to vacation here, but really it, it's a place for Mexicans to go vacation in Mex within Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you agree with that statement? Yes, actually, we have a lot of national tourists. I mean, not just international tourists. Uh, we also have a lot of national tourists. A lot of Mexicans that come. Actually, a lot of uh, clients and guests that I've had over the 
18 years that I've been in this industry yeah. is that they're always surprised to see, or I would say at least in the past 15 years, surprised to see so many Mexicans in the hotels. And I always tell them, Mexican economy is really changing yeah. a lot. And it's all these cool factors that you know are making it so our people can also enjoy our culture. And I'm sure this is why it's been trending up because yeah. now our people can, not just foreign people, but our people can also yeah. enjoy There's a lot it. of people who aren't born here, who are not here, who can actually come here and like learn their stuff and get what they need to do. But um, on that note, uh, I loved it. What, what would you rate out of five? Uh, definitely, like this. This is the place to go for for tacos. Yeah, like absolutely, I agree. Like we've had some good stuff back home in Nothing Seattle, close to Washington, this, but like this, in the depth of flavor and the handmade quality, blows it yeah. out of the water. Um, and by far, it just has so much flavor for such simplicity. And but for again, for like when good. traveling, you're always looking to travel on a budget. So like you can't beat that for oh, no. for the price range. Yeah, again, really it was. Can. I mean, 22 pesos 22 or so pesos per taco. A little over a dollar. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can't beat that. Um, so this is a good destination for traveling on the budget. Um, if you want to learn a lot about it, definitely come here. Like we said, uh, you know, definitely go to uh, VajardaFoodTours.com, I believe. Come here and ask for Luis Alba. He's very educational, knows his stuff, knows his tacos. We're going to go ahead and put our links below. Uh, definitely subscribe to us. If you don't like it, Hit that dislike button twice. twice. Make sure you comment on it. Come here, support a local family place. Come to El Puerto de Oro. Try these tacos. Don't try one, don't try two, because that's not going to be really good enough for you. Try like 17, because you know you're going to love it. Give or take. Um, or give, give or take, yeah, definitely. You know, try some. Uh, try all everything they have. Try all the sauces. Don't be afraid. And, and again, just, just like me, like, you know, you're worried about the spices. You're worried about trying new things. You, you have to risk it to find all these right. amazing extra flavors. Keep on wandering, guys. <laughs> Keep on searching for that new thing. And I know it's always like, I, I just jumped the gun on that. But well, uh, as always, y'all have a great day and we'll see you later. And as always, keep on wandering. Hey everyone, we just finished the tacos. So we went down the little street a ways. Uh, about five ten minutes by car to the place called the tasting room uh, to learn more about tequila and mezcal and the local specialty which is ricea ricea that is correct that is that is correct well today we we are going to do a, just a little mini tasting i want i want to represent again the local ricea and a little or a low batch tequila that we call or a artisanal tequila that really a lot of people haven't tried tequila this way because it's a high percentage alcohol. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to learn a little bit about it. Now, what's what's what exactly is uh, the difference between tequila and ricea? The difference between both is I'm going to put it in three steps. First one is region. Region. I always compare this to champagne in France or let's say white sparkling wine in Europe. You know, white, gotcha. white, white sparkling wine in Europe, all through Europe they make white sparkling wine. But it depends on the region where they make it. It gets named, for example, Champagne, France, Prosecco, or Brut. Yeah. In Mexico, we have kind of, or basically the same thing. Technically, all through the years, everything, or all through the country, it was a mezcal. That is how the essence of these drinks were born. They were born being a mezcal. But then, thanks to the modern dominations of origin, that means the geographical regions where they get made, is how they got renamed because every region started to, uh, how you say, win their dominations of origin. For example, the first one is tequila. So in certain regions of Mexico, they make tequila and they have to follow a certain, let's say, procedure, laws, a certain, they have to use blue agave, for example, and then you can make it or you can name it tequila. Raicilla is a derivative of this family. Raicilla is also a domination of origin. It comes, let's say, from mezcal. Yeah. It's a family member of tequila, but it's the region where they make it that gets named or the domination of origin that they use. It's how it gets named as Raicilla. So this oh, is what I mean gotcha. when I say region. The second key element is agave or species of agave. I don't know if you are familiar with it or the people that are watching us are familiar with this, but in Mexico, there is over 150 uh, uh, forms or species of agave. 
Wow. I thought oh, I didn't okay, know. Okay, yeah, I, I knew there was a lot, but I didn't know it was that So many. let's say, let's put an example, and I think always with examples is going to be the correct way to look at this. Let's look at wine. In wine, there is different grapes, like Merlot, Tempranillo, Malbec, Syrah. Yeah. Well, in the agave world, there is Espadín, Cupriata, Mariquish, Cereal, Cierreño, Cerrudo, Tepestate, Jabalito, Alar. I mean, there's a lot of species of agave all through the country. So every region, every agave, every terroir, give you a different element, a different profile of flavor. By consequence, give you different distilled Wow, beverages. okay, yeah. Okay, so that's number two. And number three is process of making it. When tequila nowadays, it's a little bit more industrial, let's put it this way, that they make a much bigger production because they export a lot, you know, United States, Canada, Europe, etc., etc. Um, so it's made more of an industrial way. So let's say they try to um, uh, efficientize their process of making it. This way they can make more bottles. Yeah. While Raicilla, for example, or even some Mezcal or Bacanora or Sotol, by the way, that are the other uh, five dominations of origin that we have in this country, <laughs> they make it in smaller batches. For example, this Raicilla, just to put an example, they made, this is bottle 76 out of 180. So the production super or the small making, batch. super small batch. So the difference, let's say, of the cooking or the process is probably cooking it. For example, this one gets more cooked in a, in a um, we call it punto uh, autoclave, which is a oven that steams it and cooks it. And this one gets cooked in an adobe oven. That oh, means that it's made out of, made out of yeah. mud. And they throw it in there and they bury it and they cover it almost nice. like a barbacoa or almost like a birria. <laughs> so, you know, all those changes uh, of how they cook it is gonna is gonna influence. I always put the example because I love to put examples. This example of the salsa: you get tomatoes, jalapenos, serrano, <laughs> onions, and uh, garlic, and you put them in mesquite wood, and you get exactly the same one, and you put it in a pan, and you cook it, you roast it. The pan one, you put it in a blender with salt and pepper. The mesquite wood, you clean it, you take it out, you put it in the molcajete, which is a yeah. a, uh, a volcanic rock. You bush it, salt and pepper. They have exactly the same ingredients, but they have such a world of a difference of the profile flavor, and it's because of the process that you use to make it. So if you ask me, this is the perfect example to prepare one or the other. Awesome. Well, that's all, all, kind of all overwhelming with just the variations you just talked about, <laughs> uh, and really exciting. Um, and the closest uh, my experience tells me it's like, Oh yeah, you can have whiskey, but the, no, this is a you know bur bourbon whiskey. It's a this, you know that. Mm -hmm. Very particular the ways that you have to barrel it, the way that you do that. Now, one thing that has always confused me about tequila, everyone's like, well, there's like three major types based off color. <laughs> what, what what does that mean? What like is there any truth in that? What does that mean? Because even in the wall behind me, there's different shades. Like here's a really dark one over here, really dark one on silver. Like what is what is all that? So nowadays, and this is very specific to tequila. Tequila is the one that is really pushing this or doing this, the barrel, or this is kind of why they've really, really gone well, and especially the American market, because that oaky, that tannin flavor, it suits well, or it's very palatable for Americans. But let's just talk about simplicity. There's three major kinds. Obviously, there's other subcategories. We're not gonna get too into it, because otherwise we'll be here for three days. But we are going to talk <laughs> about the differences of between all of them. So, tequila, naturally, comes in blanco. Blanco, white. white. The way it's made, processed, cooked, and distilled, it always gonna come in black wine. Not just for tequila, this is for all our distilled beverages. This is how it comes. This is the essence, the base of the flavor of agave. But then, our ancestors, the producers, the tequila producers, have started to put it in barrels. Obviously influenced by European, European influence, which right. comes to whiskey and all scotch and all these, uh, let's say, elements of distilled beverages. So, the next or the other drums will be reposado. Reposado means that it's proposed in a barrel. That is, sit in a barrel oh, from okay. at least four months and all the way to less than nine, or sorry, the less than a year. So a little bit over nine it's months. It's kind of aged, basically. So it's aged, okay. okay? So that is what we consider a reposado. According to that gnome or that, let's say, regulation or that law, it has to be at least four months, less than a year, and you can name it reposado. 
okay? And then the barrel variations, I, we were talking about this earlier, it really depends on the producer. Some use French oak, some American oak, some use, uh, I mean, whatever is that the... Um, Flavor of the mouth is. Yeah, well, or let's say the Maestro Tequilero, whatever is his recipe yeah. is the type of barrel that he's, he's gonna use. And again, this is very personal to every company that makes the but, but again, so the key thing is, it's in a barrel for four, minimum of four months, no longer than a year. No longer than a year. And then that's reposado. And then we're gonna jump to the other other category called añejo, which is the age tequila or the most, or the longest sitting in a barrel. Uh, tequila or añejo tequila is considered when it's a, at least a year, all the way to least than three years. Okay, so you can have it for a year or you can have it all the way up to three years or less than three years to be more precise. And then you can consider this a añejo tequila. Okay, añejo is a category, one of the maximum categories, even though there's an extra añejo that goes or passes the three year stage. But that's, again, that's a different story. Yeah, that's, yeah, further down the line, we're keeping it simple. We're keeping it simple. And this obviously gets much more profiles of the flavor, um, the barrel, the tannins are much more visible, the pepperiness of, yeah. of the age. Whenever it's the barrel has been aged within that. Exactly. Stuff. I'm guessing this would be like a Actually, that is a, that's a ricilla and it's that's flavored with the pork. So we, uh, actually that's a hibiscus ricilla. And I think the other one is a, uh, is a guaste comate ricilla that is kind of a gourd, almost like a pumpkin. And it's been flavored with that, but that's a flavored tequila or a flavored ricilla, sorry. So it doesn't fall in any of these categories. That has not been put in any barrel. It's just literally natural fruit that's been added, natural flavors. For example, we're just gonna get this. This is, this is a pasiflora that is kind of like a, very similar to a passion fruit. It's ah. called pasiflora. And look at this. You, it's natural you shake fruit. it up and you shake it up. It's all cloudy. Yeah, and nuts. this one is just a liquor. I mean, it's really not, you know, not, uh, not aged or anything. So if you see this on the age comes, it's just because it's flavored by a Gotcha. Well, that's that, cool. That is correct. So yeah, that's a little bit uh, of how you can describe this. Also, we are gonna, we are just gonna concentrate on the true flavors of the okay, agave. perfect. Because I want you guys to really yeah. experience it. So you were saying there's a special pouring in or uh, time you have to let it air. Can you, can you show us what that means? Well, um, it's not precisely uh, air, it's really more where you serve it. Okay. So, like uh, like tequila or even raizilla, I say they're very close to each other because they they were born being made basically the same way. They're, they're brothers that went slightly different paths. Brothers, yeah, brothers from, yeah, brothers from another mother, if you want to say it, uh, the same yeah. father but from another mother. Gotcha. That went slightly their own path, their own way, right. even though they're connected, actually they share the same state. So, Raizilla is made in Jalisco, which is our state, but it's made in this region from uh, La Estancia, Volcanes, uh, San Sebastian, all the way down the coastline, Bahia de Banderas, Vallarta, and all the way to the south coast of El Tuito. And this is the coastline, basically, of Jalisco. And then tequila, on the other hand, is made on the mountainside, coast of Guadalajara, uh, La Ruta del Tequila that we call, that is Tequila, Magdalena, Matitán, Arenal, and all these other towns. So, not just from another mother, but also they come from the same state. They oh, come wow. from the same okay. people. So, but they just kind of went slightly their own way. Nice. So yeah, um, so we're gonna pour a little bit of tequila. We're gonna start with a little bit of tequila. Um, we like to shake it, it encapsulates the flavors, the aromas. We like mm -hmm. to serve it in these flutes. I think it's always properly because it really results for the flavors and the aromas really, really stay in, in, in the glass. So I'm gonna serve you a little bit right here, my friend. So we're gonna do a poquito right here so we can uh, we can really get a little bit of, uh, of, the, of the flavor profile of it. I always say that it is important to uh, to um, to stir it up, open open up the open up the, the flavor profiles. I would do I would do a little bit of this. You know, a lot of um, a lot of maestro tequileros or a lot of people that are into tequila always you know goes contra luz and they check. The, we call it the long ones. We call it patas or we call it legs, and the small ones we call them tears. And this is just more of a this. It really shows you how they distill it or the process of distilling and also the quality of uh, the tequila. We, I mean, these guys already represent it in their bottle. They're really proud of what they do and they already told us exactly how it is. Yeah. I mean, it's probably not as important as the flavor profile. 
we want to concentrate on how it tastes and how to drink it. And for this, we need to do a technique that um, will allow you to really enjoy the flavor profiles. I always say that um, it's important to really result in those, those peppery notes, those uh, earthy notes that agave, and even that sweet caramel brown sugar notes that agave has to offer. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna sip a tiny bit, if you want, just hear me out. We're gonna sip a tiny little bit. We're gonna hold it in our mouth. We're gonna breathe through our nose with our mouth closed like this, or inhale. We're gonna cut the circulation of air. That means we're gonna hold our breath like we're trying to go into water. <laughs> okay. We're gonna swallow it. And immediately after we swallow it, we're gonna gently blow it out from the back of your throat, like you're trying to clean your glasses. Okay. Ah, okay. okay, so so sip. Hold. Hold. Breathe. Breathe in. Breathe with your nose only. Yeah, with your nose. And then hold the respiration, like you're trying to hold your breath. You're gonna swallow it and then you're gonna gently breathe it out. Okay. I recommend drinking a little bit of water. It's gonna help you kind of open your palate and also okay. clean it a little bit from external flavors, if you wanna name it that way. Listo. So we're gonna swirl it a little bit. We're gonna smell it from the middle. I want you guys to imagine a, pineapple, a roasted pineapple, a roasted caramel notes, a little bit of, a, let's say, brown sugar. It's almost like moscavado or brown sugar. When you roast it, I don't know if you done a custard and, or try to custard, like try to focus a little bit on that. that smells good. Actually. And it's okay if you don't. There's this, you know, we have such different uh, palate uh, taste or we have such different palates or even smell buds. My uh, my sense of smell is uh, I, I, not very good at My sense of smell is pretty good for this. My fiance's uh, a sense of smell, she can detect my stinky shoes from across the room, <laughs> like three kilometers. I, I have that kind of you smell know, that like, she has. That like, I am she's, very strong on so, smell. So, you know, that's, we have our different <laughs> right. smells, yeah. right? right? So guys, we're gonna go with the drinking. I'm gonna walk you through it first so that we okay. can get a little bit used to it because I know there's a lot of steps. I would always recommend getting our, from the bottom right here, kind of very similar to wine. Also, we don't, I mean, even though it's not chilled or anything, we don't want to interfere with any of the temperature. We're gonna let our mouth or our palate do that for us. Okay. okay, so we sip a little bit and we hold it. Tiny bit. Hold it. Then we're gonna breathe with our nose in. Hold that respiration. I want you to swallow it. And then immediately blow it out. And as soon as you blow it out, then I want you guys to taste it like you're trying to taste. Oh wow. You see all these peppery, beautiful notes. You see how the burn is not there. Yeah. You see how the burn is not persistent. It really didn't burn at all or basically nothing. So I always say, this is the first try. This is us trying to get agave to like us. I was mentioning that agave is pretentious and agave doesn't like you just right away just because <laughs> you, you just walked in and oh yeah, yeah, come on in. Agave likes to be understood. So I'm gonna do it too with you guys. Okay, and then we're gonna do it one more time and I want you to see now the aromas and flavors that this is going to um, Let's say, you gotta take it off for its first date, basically. Yeah, basically, we need to cleanse our palate, we need to get our body used to it. But I want you guys to see how different it can be once we drink it the correct way and we follow the sequence of the process. So, now let's try it without water, just, okay. just by itself. Tiny bit of a, uh, of a sip, we hold, we breathe, and we do the whole process. I'll walk you through it. Guys, I forgot to mention, salud. 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 It's very important once we are drinking tequila or any alcoholic beverage, which uh, healthy, healthy to everybody else. All right, saludita. Tiny little sip. Hold it. Breathe. Hold that. Swallow. And I want you guys to see how much more sweeter it got, how much all these caramel profiles, well not caramel, I would say more like brown sugars, but also you have that pepperiness of the agave. You have those peppery notes, you have almost little bit of floral kind of on the back. It is a huge difference on the second sip compared to the first one. It's, is it, now is this normally how you should always drink tequila? That's how I would drink tequila. That's how That's I awesome. would always recommend everybody that, that, to drink the flavor, tequila. The flavor on that was completely different. Again, this is just me and this is very, very personal. And I found out that my palate or my body and actually not just mine, a lot of people tend to enjoy tequila much better with this small little breathing technique because you allow the flavors to sit in your in your in your in your palate. And you, you were saying earlier that like 
to drink tequila properly, you don't, you shouldn't mix it with things. It, no. it should be just enjoyed separately, separately. So you enjoy all the flavors. Exactly. Now, like when I drink whiskey, I have a problem with my gut. It hurts, and so I need a chaser with it. Like, what would you? Is there something you would recommend as a chaser, like fruit juice or wa is preferably water? If you have that issue where it starts hurting your gut. Preferably maybe water because it's such a bland element. It really influences nothing in the palate. I'm not saying it doesn't help, but I, I, there's a lot of people that like to mix it with fruit. For example, orange, pineapple, um, grapefruit could be another element, maybe with some chili powders. There's a lot of people that do that. So you cleanse your palate and it doesn't help with it. It just gives other notes, right? It gives yeah. other, other aromas. Me, me being a purist, and this is very, very personal, and guys, you don't have to do this, but I I would not even chill it, I would just drink it by itself, I would drink so it so unchilled. So uh, room temperature, the way don't, it is. don't touch anything else, the small sippy notes, they would, take yeah. the time to enjoy take the time. it. So it, it's more of a, a fine art of tasting exactly. and enjoying it, rather than, hey look, this is an alcohol we designed to be Yeah, no, shots no, no, of. No. But I, 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 usually, I usually drink tequila slow, well, but I don't drink it like this, like this, and I like that's, this. That's you see how different? Like, that that people, right when they think tequila, they're like, oh, we need a, like, this is to get us messed yeah. up as fast as possible. And I get it, there's brands. Let's get trashed. Yeah, there, there's different <laughs> brands out there that, you know, have market themselves or have um, really, really put themselves to this type of market, right? You get a lime, you get a tequila, and you shoot it. And obviously, this is, I wouldn't say a taboo, but it's a culture that's definitely happened specifically in the United States, and not just in the United States. Mexico is also followed. Actually, this lime and tequila thing was literally, or actually born in Mexico. And it's because, I mean, imagine tequila being made 200 years ago, and now how it is, is the recipes are perfected, yeah. are, are eased uh, for gotcha. the palate. You know what I mean? 200 years ago, probably they were not as perfected. And you would get really, really rough alcoholic beverages. So how are these people gonna enjoy it? Well, the lime factor, the salt factor, the city, yeah. really, really that came to place to tone it down. But now it's perfected, I mean, let me ask you a question. Do you think it needs any of the... No. Of the especially, especially the way you showed us how to drink it, honestly. The first time you taste it, the second time though. The second really, time, yeah. It really exudes the really, flavors. And, and every time you drink it, every single step of the game, it's going to be so different. Every single time you taste it, every single time you cleanse your palate, every single time is going to give you different notes and profiles. See, that's, that's how I'm going to start drinking it from now yeah, on. It, I, just, I it just tastes better. Well, I have that's noticed better. like the difference between the different sips. And you get very intense, warm, tingling with mostly at the tip of the yes. tongue. Yes, the tip, um, but then on the back you kind of have that. The, the, the almost, almost the air, air of sweetness, yeah. Um, I'd say a mineral, I like to say a mineral yeah. flavor, you know when you do a copper, or you put water in a copper? Uh, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, that yeah. mineral? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah but it, it definitely is very different as, as you continue to sip along it. Yeah, for sure. So now we're gonna jump, if you guys don't mind, we're gonna jump to the Raisilla. And I now that you taste it correctly, you know what tequila tastes like, but I want you guys to see the world and the gap of the difference between this agave and this agave. And again, it's gonna be like you do two completely different ways. Cab all the way to Merlot, just to put an example, that's not exactly the correct. The exact uh, yeah, example, yeah. but just to put like how different both of them are going to be. You said that the difference was mountains versus coastal. Uh, yes, or well, in Raisilla, in Raisilla, there's two subcategories. There is coastal Raisilla and there's mountain Raisilla. Uh, we are going to try. You know, this is very, very interesting. This one in particular, or this this one, because he has three different variations of agave. But this one that we're going to try, that is the blue label of Tesoro del Oeste from San Sebastian. Um, my good friend Sergio Checo, saludos hermano. Um, he got agave from the coast okay. called Angusforia, which is the species of agave. He brought it to San Sebastián, which is the mountains, mm -hmm. and he processed it there. So then that is going to just Do a really, really flavor. play around with the flavor profiles of this. Oh, spirit. awesome. Okay, so Sorry. we're going to try it un poquito. The same thing, uh, gentlemen, we're going to... We're gonna taste it a little bit. We're gonna, well, first we're gonna smell it. We're gonna work on our senses and then we are gonna trim it down to the taste buds or the taste profiles, all right? We're gonna serve it a little bit more so we can have at least three sips here. Already, I, I, I'm already, it's not as, I, I guess, smoky or, or peppery would, mm -hmm. the, would be the words I'm using. There's a lot more, not mild, but 
Different for sure. Different for sure, yes. I'm gonna put these over here so we can uh, get them a little bit out of the picture if you don't mind. That way we can we can uh, we can see this. Okay, perfect. So so now just at the entrance, I mean I've tasted this ricea many many times. Mm -hmm. I like to swirl it around because I like the aromas to kind of that's why we serve it in flutes because aromas can play around right here. It's like a little perfect playground. Just and it's just waiting that. for us. <laughs> so you have the elements, look at that, of that really floral notes, really, really spice notes. Like right away, you have that floralness. Like you can tell the difference a bit of elements of the smoky flavor of how it gets cooked, which is the mesquite wood. Definitely you're gonna have adobe. Adobe is this clay pot. So imagine making a, a I would say like a, a, like a brisket and this clay pot or adobe, just, you know, <laughs> your brisket is gonna acquire yeah. the taste of all the elements yeah. that go or wrap around it. So just right there, you can already tell how different it is yeah. from tequila, okay? And we're gonna clean our palate. Here we're gonna use water. Every change of uh, agave spirit, I like to really change it or let's say cleanse it with water. So we're, we're gonna clean it here. Let's say clean it a little bit. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing, guys. The same, uh, the same uh, technique. All right, okay. gentlemen. Saludita, like we say in Mexico. Salud. Remember to breathe. Hold that. Swallow, and then breathe it out. That's smooth. That's really smooth. So that that one to me, like you don't get as much of the fire on the top. On the fire in the top. You get the taste of the fire. The taste. So let it's me like tell earthy. you. Let me tell you a little fun fact: is that they're basically the same percentage of alcohol. Oh wow! This is what I mean about how once you really get into drinking it correctly, you're always going to seek for higher percent alcohol because you want that. There's people I I love high percent alcohol, it's and okay. you want that, but you can see already how how different it is from one of the other. You can definitely get those yeah. much, much more hints of earthiness, of, pe of floral, a lot of floral. I mean, it's grown on the mountain. It's, in San Sebastian, it's a little bit of a, it's kind of piney. So that, that just that influence I was say, it's itself. It's kind of like earthy. And exactly, like, yeah. it's kind of piney. And, and that's just how they, Smooth. even though it comes from the coast, also the processing, uh, the fermentation, yeah. and the, uh, you know, the, where it's, where it's sitting at, like it's gonna influence every single step of the game. Remember the salsa example? It could be exactly <laughs> the same thing, but you change a slight little process of how you make it and it's gonna influence drastically in the flavor profiles. Well, wonderful. Salud, gentlemen. Salud. Saludita. Stays right there. It just cleanses in your palate. You can you it just perfumes it, and it just gives you all these beautiful aromas and flavors. Yeah, I, I, I like this yeah, the, it just, the, it just the, has the, such the, a good flavor. It just it. it's very different flavor that you get the more like I said the smokiness and like smooth is not the right way. No, I was going down. It was, it was pretty smooth the first one, but this one. Has less of the peppery, I guess. Less of the, I would say less of that, you know, that bite, almost like that. Like, almost silky. This is much more silky, yeah. like much more buttery, if you want to name yeah. it. So it suits more um, palate. You know, this is a myth that, you know, tequilas are smooth, or paisillas are smooth. And I, and this is, again, me just being me and mm -hmm. much more personal, but I don't believe in that. Like, oh yeah, yeah, you just automatically is going to be smoother. Yeah. I mean, this is a distilled beverage, an alcoholic beverage. It is supposed to, you know, cleanse, burn, or not burn, but like give you all these flavors. Right. What people confuse it is the right way of drinking it. That's good. It's, this is not smooth. Right. If you taste it the normal way, this is not smooth. But it is because you're drinking it yeah. correctly. And this is what agave likes. Agave likes to be understand because you can see now we understand it a little bit. We learned a little bit about agave. So agave is like, okay, okay, I, I like these guys. So right? it's a successful yeah. first date. I like, I, you, I made, kinda, you made, I you made like good romance. Guys. Yeah, I kind of like these guys. I am starting to like them and oh, maybe, maybe. Well, well, maybe, maybe. We'll see. Now you might have the second day if you elevate a little bit. You know. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can, I can, you know, I can show them around and you know, it's a maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what agave is. Agave really awesome. likes to be understand. And once you do it, you get these beautiful aromas, flavors, with beautiful brands, with beautiful production that um, 
sometimes people don't know about. Yeah, well, thank you very much. That, that's that's been a wonderful learning lesson. Yeah. Um, again, like night and day different from the mentality that you know I've gotten of tequila from my sister, who would go out and have wild times with it. <laughs> where yeah. like this would be more my speed. Of, I'm going to sit back and enjoy, enjoy and find it. the details. Exactly. It's you know it's 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 a whole different world. Once you open that world and once you open that door, uh, a lot of people, most people, never go back because they see tequila, they see resilla, they see mezcal, yeah. they see bacanora, sotol, and all these Mexican agave spirits or let's say uh, distilled spirits, um, they see it a different way. They, 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 again, understanding it is just so beautiful. I've been doing this for a while and I've been enjoying it. I also have my own resilla, uh, te, uh, mezcalera or mezcal restaurant. and. And just seeing people enjoying it yeah. really makes me happy. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, again, this was from the tasting room uh, here in downtown Puerto Vallarta. Uh, we were here with Vallarta Tour. Vallarta Food Tours. Food Tours. Um, with Luis Alba. Our excellent guide here. Uh, we have a few more videos to do on this series, but you guys will have to come along for the ride. So we're gonna go ahead and put everything on here, subscription, you name it, everything that we have. Uh, yeah, as always, it'll be in the link below. If you like this content, please hit the subscribe button, hit the, the like, thumbs up, and hit the notification bell for more. And as always, guys, keep on wondering. <laughs>